Carrying whatever they could grab in the middle of the night, residents of Mosul fled the neighborhoods they once called home, caught in the crossfire of the bloody battle to rid Iraq of ISIS. This man says Islamic State fighters shot at families trying to stop them from getting out. Many were killed, luckily they escaped. But the danger these Iraqis escaped isn't just coming from ISIS. They say it's also coming from the coalition forces fighting to liberate them. The coalition air force fired on us, this man says. ISIS snipers go to the top of buildings that have families, and the air force hits these buildings, killing them and everyone in the house. Reports of U.S. airstrikes killing civilians have grown in recent weeks, as fighting gets more intense. The U.S. military is investigating claims that anywhere from 100 to 200 civilians may have been killed in multiple attacks in Mosul. If confirmed, it would be one of the highest civilian death tolls since the Iraq war began in 2003. In one West Mosul neighborhood that was struck last week, search teams are still pulling bodies from the rubble. The U.S. confirms it was conducting operations in the area, but at the request of Iraqi forces. An Iraqi commander tells the New York Times they did call in an airstrike to target ISIS snipers on a rooftop, but they didn't know there were civilians inside the building. The truth is hard to find amidst the rubble. Despite their recent success, Iraqi forces are halting their push because of the civilian death toll. In the densely populated narrow streets of the western suburbs, ISIS has dug in, using human shields and hiding amongst local residents. There are also serious concerns about the same thing happening in Syria, where the U.S. is being blamed for an airstrike in the northwest last week that left dozens dead. As international outrage over the civilian deaths grows, the U.N. says it's stunned by the loss of life, saying the battle to retake Mosul can't come at the expense of those they're trying to free. Stephen D'Souza, CBC News, New York.